right, left you last week and I was cutting a bunch of boards and I got a bit of a mess here. I got wood all over the sawmill. I've got stuff everywhere. But anyway, um, I brought these two down and I want to get them on the sawmill. But the only thing down here right now is Ricardo or Ricky right there. <sighs> all right, so this is all going to make sense. All right, I definitely want to, I definitely want to be able to get those on the mill with Ricky. Problem is I ruined the forks a while back. Let's go over by Ricky real quick. All right, Ricky's here, guys. Ricky has been helping me at the house site. I brought him back down here because it was kind of muddy. It rained a bit, so a lot of time when it, rains i gotta bring ricky up to the house site instead of the little cushman so okay so before i get into this next part of fixing these i want to show you i actually wound up taking a sledgehammer and beating up the bottom plates there and i got them in working order again they can click into the plates of the tractor so if you can see i had to make a few relief cuts there and there and not on the other side, but I bent it to a point where it's functional again. The only other problem I have now with these forks is that it is, well, the one on the back side there, that one, it's, well, pointing downward. The front one, one closest to the screen here, that one's fine. The other one got bent because I was an idiot and tried to pry a rock out of the ground with the fork, with the skid steer when I first got it, so... Um, so I got an idea. Here, here's what I'm going to do, guys. So instead of trying to bend this metal back into its normal shape, what I'm going to do is make three cuts. One on the bottom and one on each side and leave the top as is. Then, once that's cut, I'm going to bend this thing up and then I'm going to put some reinforcement steel. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, you can really see how messed up it is there. So, yeah, just to repeat, I'm cutting here, I'm cutting the sides, and then I'm going to bend the thing. And then I'm going to put some of the old green sawmill. There's some metal that is, I think it's a quarter inch or so. Um, at least, it might be three-eighths. But I'm going to basically create a sleeve and weld that on top of the repair. Um... I don't think I have to do it to that one, too. I don't know. Should they match? We'll see. We'll see how we feel about it. I'd like to get these things working again because I'm going to be getting block coming for the house build. And I'd like to put these on the skid steer and grab those pallets or whatever else we're ordering. Um, these are going to come in handy. Not to mention... When I have Ricky down here, I'd like to use the forks to grab logs and put them on the mill or unload the sawmill uh, table. So, all right, these could be really handy. I want to get them back to working again. this view you could definitely tell that the back one is looking a little sad who's that who's that hey hi you came to see me you did too Carmen okay yeah. see how I got it buckled and the other one is pretty intact but right here there's a super nasty bowl there's a concavity there or concave section here I like these the little metallic markers they work good working with uh, marking up your metal they seem to last when you're grinding the metal down or uh, cutting it actually I like the gold one better than the silver 
All right, so that's it. Bottom, sides, leave the top. I'll bend the top. When I bend it, it'll create a gap here. It'll be straight at that point, but it'll be gapped. So then I'll have to come in with a plate on the sides and, and here, and then weld it all together again. Hopefully that'll be strong enough. These only have like 4,000 pound capacity. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's plenty for what I need. All right, let's get the grinder. Now it's just a matter of uh, bending this the opposite direction with the loader. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. If I could get it to uh, be strong now, that's another story. So much better. All right, so I, I still have this old, this is the old rails, which is quarter inch angle from the sawmill. I got a big piece of it reserve and I was gonna do something like that something like that I'm gonna cut it skinnier but weld it along the three points here oh had to call in the big guns here let me go <laughs> on this side you could be right there and I'm gonna try to catch it with my left hand go ahead tap it Let me get some oil. All right, give it a go. Hit it. Other corner, this corner here. Yeah. I feel like I'm morphing it. It's going to make it worse. what I'm using as far as reinforcement I gotta cut like a strip of this for this side and then the two other side for the bottom and the two sides okay round up make it nine <laughs> okay. inch and three quarters 
That'd be plenty. Ooh, maybe not. Okay, It'll be alright. Alright, I'm just wrapping up here for the day, guys. I'm going to call quits and resume tomorrow, but I wanted to point this out. So, this is going to be a sleeve, a three-piece sleeve, kind of like... Kind of like this angle, but with uh, but with one more piece like coming up this way. That's kind of what I'm recreating here. So this will be the bottom, like so, and then I'll have a you know a side on each side. But <clears throat> I wanted to point out. So I got it all cut to size and whatnot, and I got these so that they will go on like that. Hopefully you could see that. But here's the thing. So I've been can you see that well? I've been kind of chamfering or making a little bevel here on the side and that way when I put this up here and then I get my welder out and go to weld that I actually have a gap to fill and then I'm not asking too much of that little welder that I have. Instead I am being more realistic and filling in that void and then filling it in with the weld wire um, it's just a good way, I think, to, to build up the material. So I'm learning. I think my uh, welding skills are improving, and I'm starting to understand as far as uh, different techniques and whatnot. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the welding tomorrow, and um, we'll get this thing up and running. I also thought, since this is hollow square tubing, and I have access right back here, you can stick your hand in there, like all the way through here. I think I'm gonna cut out one more small section here, like a three inch section, and then put it across here on the inside, prop it up in there, and then just kind of like fill in this void. And then I'll have something that, so there's just not like a gap, you know? A little bit extra, since this is a weak spot, it would give it a little more stability. And um, basically I'll like, I'll put the face of it up like that, like I'll probably like prop it up there with a, piece of wood or something and then just kind of like tack it in place and then run some really strong beads to fill in this section and then I'll have my I don't know what do you want to call this thing a collar something like that I'll have that over top so that's the plan okay I think I'm just gonna tack it on the inside on each side thanks for the sleeves Jan they're gonna be great. Okay, where can I ground it now? I always do this. I always set it up and then it's like not grounded and I gotta like, ah. See? Ah. All right, we'll tack this one. Hopefully that ground transfers should be enough. Doesn't look too square, does it, John? <laughs> um, I might have to redo this one. This one came out kind of. This one's good, I think. Let's see. Start over. All right, how about getting a real hammer, John? All right, just start over. I'm gonna get my little flap wheel. All right, let's go over here. Hold on, let's ground it first, John. Here. Then we're gonna make sure we 
have 90 by using this guy this way. Glad I did that because it was a little acute. Aren't those small angles adorable? Sorry, dad joke. Okay. That was the ugliest tap. Look at that thing. You couldn't do worse. Hmm. Oh well. That was bad. Look at that. <laughs> I just, I like making fun of my work. It, it's fun. <laughs> Get it all perfect and then you like wind up doing a weld like that. It's like, what is wrong with you? All right, so we got the bevels here. Let's do our little magnet guy. Leave, it will slip in there. I'm gonna have to convince it to get in there. Maybe before I do this outside weld, I'll get the shape. Ooh, that's hot. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do first is create something on the inside. I'm gonna cut a plate that's about that wide, and then I'm gonna put it through this tubing. And then from here, I'm just gonna um, weld it from the outside. See if that helps. That's gonna be strong. in the act. Uh-huh, there's one dog. Where's the other one? This is a little... All right, Meg set up a tent over here. Not a tent, sorry. Meg set up a hammock over here. This is where the old hog shack used to be. This is Meg. While I'm working hard, here's Meg. Hey, Meg. Hey. What you doing? Reading. So we got one. Man, tough life, huh, Carmen? Where's the other one? There's Maddie over there. Maddie. They keep me company. Yeah, Maddie's looking out to the northwest, and uh, Carmen's looking looking to the southeast. Meg, you know you got your uh, your ear protection on still, right? You never know. <laughs> that, that's funny. Okay, so Meg reads on her phone all the time, all hours of the night the day whenever she can i'm surprised carmen's not in your lap yeah she usually hops up here carmen you want to go up no go up and mom go see mommy she's fine okay she's a good girl okay well the dogs have definitely uh imprinted on meg lately they've been following her around I go off into the woods on my machines and the dogs just aren't following me as much anymore. I think because Meg has been feeding her them more. We feed them once a day as a meal. And Meg's been taking over that role. And uh, I think I think that's all there is to it, Meg. They like hanging out with me. Yeah. Alright, Meg, enjoy yourself. I'm gonna go fix the forks. Serves me right, I broke them. Okay, bye. This is either gonna work or just be a total failure. It there for a minute. All right, let's see.
It's got a longer piece of conduit. That would help. enough to get a tack on there I think. Alright, let's do that. some welds in there. Jeez, a little bit more heat. I'd probably bend that sucker right in there. Let's see. it's bent around it I'm gonna leave it just like that we'll get us some um, welds in there I wish I wire brushed everything before I did all this Ugh. all right I'm gonna just brush it down try to get a weld in there angle I'm looking at and they're, they're pretty lined up not bad okay hack that together <laughs> hey that'll get me on the uh, that'll give me a pair of forks again at least right so we'll see how this uh, this this collar holds up let it cool it off put some paint on there but Hey, not gonna win a uh, beauty contest, but I think it'll work great. The hammer's gone. Are you sad? I'm sad, we just brought it back today. Had for a week, we took care of mostly everything. That was a very good money spent, right Meg? Yeah, I think so. Good, okay, look what it did to my plates, guys. Super shiny, look at that. Isn't that crazy? 
you could actually feel a little rubbage right here. A little rubbage. Rubbage? Act. You mean like a groove? Rubbage. Rubbage. Okay. John's word. Here. See right here too? Super shiny. Hardened steel. All right, so um, we fixed the forks, right? So I think. We haven't tested them out yet. We just, you know, let them sit there while we had the hammer. Let's try them out. I got the skid steer here. Um, yeah, I want to move some logs around. We picked up some pallets today that we saw, and uh, I got a couple logs over there too. So I'd say let's chest it on the lighter things, and then we'll move up to the really heavy log, and we'll see how they fit on the new mill. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Who's your daddy? You see that? Clicked right in. I saw, honey. All right. How about, are we straight? I'm gonna lift them up. You get the camera. Let's see if they're straight. They look pretty good. They do. You wanna get my finished work there? I spray painted it. Looks good, John. Yeah, it'll work. It's strong as hell now. You gotta point up a little bit. You gotta go down. No, you gotta go down. There you point up a little more. Go down. Okay. I can't see. You should be good. Just go straight. Cord to the tailgate. Like, what am I doing here? Hey, you're gonna hit the trash can. Oh boy. Hey, stop. Rock. There's a rock.
this'll work just to get them out of the way and off the ground. Yep. Wow, look at those. That's junk, huh? I mean, remember that, that these were dead trees, ash trees. So there's insect damage and we have a pile of waste there, right there that's, you know, usually we're not gonna have that much waste, but you gotta remember it's, it's wood that has been going bad for a while. So anyway, um, we're using what we can. These are gonna be for the concrete forms. So for our footers on the house. But I did wanna mention something about the house and getting up there and you've seen the driveway and everything. I've said this before, I wanted to say to any new subscribers, anything like that. Um, we will not be having any big machinery other than my skid steer and the tractor, if you wanna call that big machinery. But as far as like concrete trucks, cranes, whatever, that's not coming up the driveway. The biggest thing would be the Jeep or my truck going up there. All right, let's see. Um, Let's get the rest of the boards up here. Let's neaten them up a bit and we'll do a count. Let's get them off the mill. We'll get them all from over there, put them on the forks and just place them on top of these. And then we're gonna pick up one of these really big logs. That'll be a nice test for the forks. All right. We're switching up the water level. The water level, last time we just used the tube. We put water in it that was blue and we filled it up. We clamped one end and just kind of like move the other end around. The problem with that is there's too much water displacement. So using a bucket, we will have basically an ocean of liquid at our exposal. And that way when you move one end around with the pole that you're trying to get level from, it's constantly pushing water into the bucket or taking water out of the bucket, depending on whether you're high or low on your, uh, I guess your level job. So here's what I think we should do. We need somehow to get this hose connected to the bucket. I got a valve stem here that you just, you know, for um, tubeless tires. I'm gonna take the valve out. So essentially now we just have a, is this a magnet? Ooh, that's slick. I think it's magnetic. That's cool. All right, now uh, we're gonna feed this through the hole. I think it's a half inch hole we did. I want it to be tight, not loose. I have this little valve stem puller too. You could just thread it on. I forgot I had this. I got all excited when I found it. Rest this down. There we go. Mm. Well, that's, that's gonna work great. Yeah. That should be watertight. All right, half inch hole, guys. This is actually 30, 31 60 fourths or something like that. I got a weird size bit. All right, now. We're going to put this end of our vinyl tubing. I have... That's the first hole John drilled too big. I fixed it. No, we don't show them that, Meg. <laughs> we had a little whoopsie doopsie. Um, all right, so this is quarter inner diameter, three eighths outer. So not that thick, but... Um, and if, it helps if you heat it up a little bit. All right, we definitely want this a little flexible so it can slip over these threads nicely. And as soon as that cools down, it'll definitely grip those threads. Pretend this is the pole. I'm gonna get a piece of conduit, I think. But anyway, we have a pole. We're gonna fill the bucket with liquid. We're gonna get this hose full. And then we're going to attach the hose to our, to our stick that we'll be walking around with. On that, then you're gonna put this thing at the house site and we're gonna have the to the bottom and this thing will mark where the level line is. And then we can go around and check in any location to see 
if it's high or if it's low or if it's level. So we'll do our final grading at the house site. So let's finish this up, Megan. Let's get it up to the house site. I've said it once, I've said it again. What? You're cute when you struggle. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it, John. Yeah. Is there any slushiness in there? Not anymore. No? All right. Okay, we got some, we're going to be champions today. We got a champion RV antifreeze. We're going to add some water to it because, I don't know, why not? I'm sure like a 50-50 mixture oh, won't hurt. What? I'm trying to empty the hose. You got it up. <laughs> no, it's fine. We'll put the new stuff in it and then we'll be able to tell. All Don't right. worry about it because we're going to have to drain the air, air bubbles out. Okay. Yeah. Are right, you want to do it beautiful? Sure. Okay. Water and antifreeze? Yeah, do the antifreeze first. That way you know how much is a gallon in that bucket. Although I'm sure you could divide by five. How much of this do you want me to put in? The whole thing. Ow. Let's see if you guys know Meg. I could have told you she would open it like that. Yep. I should probably not have this at an angle. Probably not. I mean, look at this savage right here. Look at her. Squeezing the bottle. How many of you would have like peeled off the aluminum foil cap perfectly? Like Meg is just <laughs> a savage with a puffy hat. Right Meg? Use that stuff. Um, if it's like single digits, I'll put a little tiny bit in the drain of the, um, the washer P-trap in the shed. So it doesn't freeze on us and cause a huge issue. I mean, it's only like a cup, like eight ounces or whatever of that stuff. All right, yeah, dilute it down. Let's put another gallon in there and it'll be good. Good, that's good, plenty. You could actually see it through the bu bucket. That's pretty slick. So I wanted to use the pink stuff because you could see it in the hose too, hopefully. And um, when we leave the hose up here, we don't have to drain it out every time. And these things work well, like it's all on gravity, but it's good if you guys can, uh, well, I've learned that it's good if you could raise the bucket up a little bit. It'll give you some more pressure when the line is trying to equalize. Did you tighten the lid? Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Is it gonna fall? I hope not. Because. Coming out already. That's all right. Okay, so we let it go until it gets to the pink and stop. Uh, well, it looks sort of pink. Why don't you, it's trying to come back up. Why don't you face it down into that puddle or something? It doesn't really matter. It's not going to be that much water. I just don't want the dogs getting into it. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. I'm ready. Do we bring a pen? No. Yeah. Oh, you did? I did, yeah. Wow. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Meg, do you want to uh, explain what's going on? We have a water level, right? Yeah. Okay, Meg is holding it. So we're going to get our zero point, which is right behind the tractor over there. And we're going to mark it on the stick. We've decided where basically the top of our footers is going to be. Right here. Yes. We're going to go at that stake. Here, you know what? Do we have, where's that spray paint? Hold on, this is going to be about at that line. Yeah? Yeah, look. Oh, here, I got to... Here, I can move this, too. Yeah, no, 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 just take this. Make a nice point arrow. It's it's that mark. That's cool. All right. All right, so, guys, when you establish that everything you wanted at this height level, no matter where you go with the stake, I mean, we have mounds and mounds of dirt and water and rock and everything else. We're going to flatten it out today because we've done all that work, like the rock work with the, with the crusher, with the hammer, the breaker hammer. We've got the rocks out of the way, the big ones anyway. Some can stay in the soil, not a big deal, like gravel sized pieces. Yeah, I think the obvious thing right now is uh, fill in the puddles. Yeah, fill in the puddles. We want to get everything smooth. We don't want this to happen again. 
All right, we don't want that to happen again because this soil just doesn't drain well. It's mostly clay. So we want to get it flat. That way, if it rains, it's not going to like form puddles all over the place. It'll form like little puddles here and there, but nothing to this extent that's going to screw up our, uh, our progress. So now Meg is going to walk around. I'm going to be in the machine and she's going to tell me what's high and what's low. And we're going to push this dirt around and get everything nice and flat. And we're going to recompact everything down. And then once everything's all flat and it's dried out and compacted and everything, we will come back and dig out our footer um, trenches. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's backwards, right Meg? Can you explain that? The water level yeah, backwards? If, like right now, this point is below, which means right here is high. Yeah, see the mark on the stick? And where's the, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. It's right here. Okay, so. For like two inches. It's opposite of what you think. So if the stick's here and that water level is here below your mark, that means you're actually on a high spot. It's and opposite you, of what you think. And you need to get, dig out that much to get it level to the, our spot over there. We need a mark, Meg, for our zero point. So we're using the same point every time. I, we did that. No, 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 on the ground. Where's the red paint? All right. That's our, our level spot. That's the spot that we're gonna zero out with. That takes us to our little carrot mark. Come on, baby. You gotta wait. It, it takes a second for this thing to level out. Meg, you're like well, three millimeters off. Well, move the stake a tiny bit. You're not in the middle of the X. <laughs>
that's a lot of progress. I think that's really good. It feels good. Yeah. It's feeling, I bet it feels different when you're driving. Yeah, better and better on the machine. I mean. Finally. Yeah. All right, we're not all the way there, but no. that's some great progress. We're ballpark, inch, two inches, either way, the whole pad, so. Yeah, and we can get more specific when we dig for the, the trenches. We'll get a little bit more specific overall. Yeah. But we got a soft spot here that it's, needs it's to dry. Good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately it's gonna rain in the next few days, but we're, we're getting there. I love the water level. I'm glad we this made it. This is awesome. Yeah, you just walk around and boom, put it wherever you need it to go. Much better than my stick with the <laughs> pink string. Yeah. Highly recommend the water, uh, with the bucket, because it makes it even out a lot faster. Yeah, and raise the bucket high so it's got some pressure. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Okay. To our uh, US viewers, happy Thanksgiving. Right, happy Thanksgiving. We'll catch you on the next one. See you guys. not to pry rocks out of the ground with my forks. I had just gotten a skid steer. That's my excuse. I know not to do that now. After we made the last video, I put one of these on. Much better. This is just for my mom. He was safe. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's been getting cold. I got my Elmer, Elmer Fudd hit. Eh, forget that. It's as simple Let, as that, Give me the camera right? for a second. What's the matter? John's hair today. It's awesome. I get Guess who cut it? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you, make, you make my hair cutting skills look good, Thanks, John. Honey. I really just took a shower. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, should be well out of the way over here.